I'm a full-time shaman in accordance with the northern traditions, with Hekati as my patron. That's great. By the way colleagues, I'd like to mention that this is quite possible, as Hekati is the patron goddess of all mages and sorcerers, regardless of their tradition or origin. I have noticed that when I work on people for whatever reason, things first get worse for them for a while, before it gets better. I feel confused about why my work makes the very situation a client needs help with, much worse at first and then, after days, things fall into place. This scares people away. Some of my clients even go to Reiki practitioners to help suit the pain and challenges that my work brings up for them. Why can't I just bring the relief that most people wish for immediately? Is it because of my code, Soilo, Yuras, Hagalas? Thank you for your time and insight. You know colleague, the magic of each of us has certain specific characteristics. What can these characteristics be? Generally, we can say that they might include the effects of the work, such as the one you described, where people you are working with feel worse before they get better. If you had turned to your patron goddess Hecate, I think she would probably explain that a person on a certain path can only change the curse by returning to the crossroads, where a choice can be made. When things or situations get worse, it simply indicates a return, a return to a specific crossroads where there is an opportunity to choose a completely different direction, one where things might not be as bad. These are the characteristics of your magic, your tradition, and the force that supports you and allows you to make targeted adjustments to this reality in order to right the wrongs, whether in the form of people's illnesses or problematic situations. But the person you are helping is not a fool or an idiot. He has hands and feet. His brain is working and his tongue is moving which means he has played an active role in his negative situation, even if it is related to a health problem. Maybe if he'd eaten less junk food he wouldn't have got sick. But he made his own choice to eat all kinds of junk food, and he is the one who ruined his health. So he has to take all the necessary steps himself, and nobody can do it for him. The force that supports you does not encourage the idea of receiving something without effort. Since this question was asked by our English-speaking audience, I apologize in advance to our translators. I'm not sure how you would translate the Russian concept of freebie. But I believe you will find an appropriate English equivalent that conveys the idea of getting something for nothing. When things go badly, a person should be aware that this can lead to great benefits in the future. But not everyone recognizes this potential benefit and instead rushes to seek help from a Reiki practitioner. Reiki masters often attract spirits that can devour everything in a person, including their illnesses. However, along with this devouring, these spirits can also sever all ties with your past, take away your experience, make you forget your path, and cause you to lose your way. It's good for people who lead a purely vegetative existence. For those who have no other activities in their lives than eating, sleeping and reproducing. For them, yes, Reiki can certainly be helpful. So direct such people to Reiki masters and avoid using your own powers, including those of the goddess Hecate, thus saving magical effort for those who really need it. But you colleague, must also ask yourself, why does it bother you? 
если вы результата по коррекции If you have succeeded in righting the wrongs of the world, then you are a true victor in the eyes of your gods. You are an absolute winner. Yet for some reason, you are concerned that people might be dissatisfied. Is that really more important to you than the opinion of the forces you work with? I believe you need to think about your priorities here. As for your individual runic code, it reflects that specific characteristic of yours, Soilo, Uras, Hagalas. The first rune, Soilo, is the rune of victory, which means that you came here with vividly pronounced algorithms of victory that have already been formed and laid down in your subcortex. All you have to do is apply them. And how can you do that? Soilo is information, Soilo is a program. A program will only work if you give it the right energy. And this energy can be of different levels, physiological, physical, energy of sensations, energy of emotions, energy of thoughts, energy of time. Each algorithm of victory requires its own type of energy. The second rune, Uras, signifies that your task is to extract this energy here, because it may be that the victory algorithms you have can work only in this reality, only on this planet, only on this earth. But you have to take this energy correctly, at a certain time, in a certain place, in a certain state of consciousness, and in a certain amount. It is different for each algorithm of victory. So your task in this life, in this incarnation, is not only to learn how to take this energy, but also to understand which energy to take, how much, and most importantly, for whom. And the resulting rune is Hagalas. Hagalas is not only the rune of destruction, but also the rune of limitation. And here the rune Hagalaz indicates that as a result of your life and activity, you must form, establish and leave behind the various rules for using the algorithms of victory given to you from birth by the gods. These rules and instructions must be clearly defined. For example, one algorithm may be triggered by a certain amount and quality of energy and can only be used in a certain way, while another may require a different amount of energy and have its own unique usage guidelines. So, this is your technical task. You have come here to conduct laboratory experiments to test certain informational rules that may function in completely different ways across various parts of the world and within different realities. For example, if there were more oxygen in the air than there is now, we would experience a completely different physical and chemical environment. Even a small increase, such as 30%, of oxygen would change everything. Similarly, this principle applies to all aspects of our reality. If there were more people on this planet, there would be one effect from your work. If there were fewer people, there would be another effect from your work. If you lived in the permafrost zone, you would get one set of results. If you lived in the tropics, you would get another set of results. And all of this can be your field research for your winning algorithms that you implement here которые вы здесь и реализуете. That's how I would describe the meaning of your Hagalas. It may be related to the effect you have described, but this is something you need to reflect on yourself. Remember all the practices you've tried and the actions you've taken. Try to connect with the gods of your pantheon, and ask your patron goddess for support. 
Raise awareness and understanding for all your life stories, especially those related to your practices, point to the same thing. They reveal what algorithms of victory you are testing in field conditions, the purpose behind them, and the results you aim to achieve. Well, that will probably be my answer to you, and I sincerely hope that it is complete and clear for you and all the colleagues here today. Now that we have finished with the questions from our English-speaking colleagues, let's move on to the questions from our Russian-speaking audience.